Hey everybody, welcome to the FN Studios. Ram Dean and Black with you. Coming up Saturday night, the Tough 24 finale goes down in Las Vegas. The main event, uh, one of the pound for pound best fighters maybe ever in mixed martial arts, Demetrius Johnson, taking on the winner of the 24th season of The Ultimate Fighter, Tim Elliott, who will be in very, very tough. When you look at one of the, some of the things that Elliott needs to do, you've had a, you've got a couple of keys to victory there, and just be, be in it is basically yeah. one of the things. Believe in yourself. Be in it for 25 full minutes. How do you do that when you're facing somebody that you've never even... There's no way that he has faced anybody... Now, I've, I know he's faced Benavidez. I know he's faced the former Bellator champion, yeah. Zach Makovsky. But those guys aren't Demetrius Johnson. How do you stay in it when you're completely out of your element and you've never dealt with a fighter the caliber of Demetrius Johnson? you, you, you got to look at the realities of the situation. And the realities of the situation are, to, for us to win, we need him to make a mistake. Maybe there's a way we can force him to do that. That would be great, if, if it's possible. You don't see that too often with Demetrius Johnson. And if and when that happens, we have to be ready to hurt him. We're going to need a little bit of luck. We're going to need a little bit of flaw or error on his, on, in his case, which is something maybe we can contribute mm -hmm. to if we approach this properly. And then we need to be there ready when that happens, when we create that scenario. So it starts with being present. It starts with being there in a fight that you know you can win. And if you don't go into a fight with Demetrius Johnson with that, or Anderson Silva, or George St. Pierre, any of these, if you go into a fight with any of these people missing that belief, that commitment, that presence in the moment, it's never gonna happen. So it starts with going in with the knowledge you can win the fight. What do you believe that uh, if you're the team of Tim Elliott, what is the strategy that you've laid out when they're looking at tape on Demetrius Johnson and they're saying, okay, we believe that you can capitalize in this area. He's not great in this area. Where do you believe that Tim Elliott's team, wh where do they think the flaws are in Demetrius Johnson? I mean, I've studied, the, I've spent maybe a hundred hours in, of my life analyzing tape on Demetrius Johnson over the last few years, and there aren't really any true weaknesses. So it has to be systemic somehow. If we say, let's box with Demetrius Johnson, he will outbox us. Let's wrestle with it. You know, none of those things are going to work. So it has to be something in the blending between them. It has to be the spaces between the movements and the options and the choices. And the problem is that he's the best at that too. You know what I mean? We literally need to run him into something simple, which happens. We also need, on some level, him to make a gaffe, which can happen. But to just go in there with a strategy of I'm going to try to fake takedowns to, to hit him, or I'm going to push him up against the fence, or let's see how it works from the clinch upon separation. Even the, the more complicated simplicities, it, you just none of them are going to work. You have to just be in a fight that you're capable of winning and be there and be ready when the opportunity arises. Can you make the opportunity arise? That'd be great. But if you can't, Maybe something happens and you're in a fight present and focused. What's interesting is we were talking to Misha Serkinov. We had him here in the studio. And not everybody has the same credentials in mixed martial arts. You have some fighters that have blue belt jiu-jitsu. There's some that are black belt world champions. Some that have been training Thai boxing for you know two decades. Some, this is, they're very new to, this, to the art of uh, Thai boxing. For when you're looking at, uh, we know that Demetrius Johnson does very, everything very, very well. But one of the things that Misha and I were talking about is even though you have these credentials and sometimes if you're the black belt in jiu-jitsu, mm -hmm. yeah, you want to go submit them. But sometimes, and you've pointed it out to me before, forget all that, just go out and fight yeah. this man. Yeah. Go out and exactly. fight and play the game yeah. of hitting and dealing with yeah. and taking, uh, taking advantage of, of the smallest openings, constantly be attacking. Is that the philosophy that you believe that Tim Elliott will try I, to execute? I think so, without a doubt. You go in there and you be inspired in the fight. You be you find inspiration in the moments of the fight itself. T uh, Elliott is an incredibly talented fighter. If if present in the fight, some of these moments will happen, and the inspiration is there. If you think you're going to run plays on him, you're screwed. You have to go out, be present, and be free, a term that is used a lot now, and go and fight the man. He's still just a man. He's just the best man at fighting. Um, but every fight is a winnable fight. Uh, Demetrius Johnson will lose again one day. You just make that day today. The co-featured bout, uh, I guess the number two guy in the entire division at flyweight, uh, Joseph Benavidez, taking on the Olympic gold medalist, Henry Cejudo. He seems to be so confident. I, you know that he believes in his heart of hearts that he's going to go out and beat Joseph Benavidez. 
When, during the fight, can Joseph Benavidez send a message to Henry Cejudo that you're not on my level? Yeah, that's, that's a really good, that's a really nice way of looking at it. Because, first of all, can you do that? Because you can't do that to Uriah Faber, say. Yeah, right. Even Frankie couldn't really ever tell Uriah, that you can never tell Uriah yeah. Faber in a fight that he's not on your level. He's going to stay there. And, he's, and I asked, actually, Uriah about that when he was fight, facing, I think, Frankie Sainz about breaking someone. He's like, so you, you have to know some of these guys will not break. Um, but you can try. And I think uh, Benavidez tries to get that message through to him. I think if Benavidez gets a clean takedown, just a clean old school wrestling takedown out in the open field, that, gonna mess that with his will mind. mess with his mind. But that's very, very hard to do against the Olympic gold medalist. But that's not a bad move. But I think if, if Sayudo has fallen in love with his striking too much, I think he may get pieced up out there. Because although many things can change since the last fights that we've seen, when you analyze his striking, it's committed and it's attribute heavy and it's very strong, but it's very rudimentary. And yes, he'll be better than those fights, yep. but Benavidez has progressed so far beyond where he is striking-wise. I think if he thinks he wants to strike with Joseph, he's in a lot of trouble. So the strategy, is, of course, if you're Dwayne Ludwig and you're helping with this, we're going to stand. We know the guy is going to yeah. try his best to outbox us. We're going to light him up, which is going to force him to look yeah. for takedowns. And is that when Benavidez capitalized? Yes, I think so. And Joseph and Dwayne, I think we're getting, I think Dwayne's coming in to do a breakdown with me next week while he's in town here with Matt Brown. Uh, so we can ask him about it then. But uh, he, he likes to get people outside of your straight line. He likes to get his fighters out. So if this is where I am, he wants you here. He wants you here. And then if that's where Joseph is and Henry turns into him, we hit him then or we take him down as he adjusts. There are moments in a fight where you have to readjust and reset. And those are moments Dwayne wants to make you pay. Also, there's a fantastic 170-pound matchup. Jake Ellenberger taking on our guy, Jorge Masvidal. Uh, are we going to get a desperate Jake Ellenberger? We know he was desperate in his last fight. There was a chance he was going to be cut from the Ultimate Fighting Championship. He was cut. And then he, yeah. he, he begged for it yeah. said, look, Good just give me one more yeah. chance. I can beat Matt Brown. And if you can beat Matt Brown, you can pretty much beat anybody in the entire division. I mean, that's just a reality because when you look at 170 pounds, it's just such a, a tight race. And Jake Ellenberger has all the physical attributes. Mm -hmm. He has all the experience. He has the know-how to get it done against most fighters. You know, I'm sure there's a couple that he might not be able to beat at the top. But again, if you can beat Matt Brown, you can beat anybody. Masvidal is just about being relaxed. Ah, this is just another yeah. guy. Nor another, like Demetrius Johnson said, just another warm body. Yeah, yeah and that's how you fight a juggernaut is you fight them relaxed and fluid. This guy's super fluid, man. Uh, there aren't many guys like Jorge Masvidal. There aren't many fighters in the world. And we talked about it a little bit on Five Rounds this week. Some people, if you are talking to somebody and, and they mention a guy like Masvidal, oh, well, look, you lost to these guys. Just stop talking to them. It, 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 you do not analyze a Jorge Masvidal based on wins and losses. Results, yeah. You ha analyze him based on the moments of genius in the cage, and there are many of them. Anybody who knows anything about fighting knows how good Jorge Masvidal is. The, whether or not he bounces in and out of the top 10 or has had the chances to show it yet is immaterial to the skill level that this guy has. And I expect to see an insane performance from him. He's, yes, it's awesome that he's fluid and relaxed and that's great, but he's, he can have an ornery switch as well. And he feels a little bit like he hasn't had his shot uh, in line with his skill level, and I think he's going to show that on Well, Saturday. what we've seen of his last three losses in five fights, all split decision losses. And what we know of Jake Gellenberger, the guy comes out hot. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine if, he, if Jake Gellenberger is going to win a round, he's going to win that first yeah. round because of how explosive mm -hmm. he is, which means yeah. that it comes down to that second and third round. And Masvidal, I would imagine, would win that third round what does he need to do to ensure that that second round is given to him? Yeah, I, I think you, he's, he'll matador Jake a little bit, and that's the right idea, I think. Uh, yes, that first round will be the tough one, but you can also strike with mm -hmm. him. You can also draw him in and land on him. When you get aggressive with Jorge Masvidal and he stays chilled, he can hurt you. Uh, this is going to be a real, I'm really excited about this fight, and I think we're going to see the best performance we've ever seen from Masvidal. We are anticipating a spectacular night of mixed martial arts. The Tough 24 finale goes down this weekend in Sin City.